Now the rest of this chapter is really a whole bunch of different ways in which ketones and aldehydes react as electrophiles. So we're going to be reacting them with nucleophiles and we call this nucleophilic addition. So in this case, the carbonyl carbon is partially positive, being double bonded to that oxygen, a uh, significant amount of polarity to that bond, and we're gonna have a nucleophile attack, and we'll kick the pi electrons up to the oxygen so that we don't violate the octet rule. And that way to this carbon, we now have attached a nucleophile. So, and it turns out we'd have an intermediate here in some way, shape, or form, where we've got the nucleophile attached, and now maybe this kind of an intermediate, and it's simply gonna get protonated and we'll add the H as well. And so to both sides of the double bond, both the carbon and the oxygen get one new bond, similar to the way we did addition reactions with alkenes, uh, and in this case, we call it nucleophilic addition because obviously there's a nucleophile adding. Uh, one thing to keep in mind, the oxygen will always actually be getting a hydrogen in everything, all the reactions we do. So there will be no like Markovnikov, anti-Markovnikov rules to talk about. It's simply what nucleophiles attacking the carbonyl and then maybe what happens after that. Uh, this is actually something you've already seen with Grignard reagents. In fact, we studied Grignard addition to both ketones and aldehydes back in the alcohols chapter. It's a great way to synthesize an alcohol. And, uh, first step is we actually do nucleophilic attack with, in this case, our methyl Grignard. Uh, recall this is the equivalent of having a methyl anion. So and in this case our Grignard comes and attacks, kicks the electrons up to the oxygen, and we get this sort of looking intermediate, an alkoxide. Cool. And then that alkoxide is going to get protonated. That's why we're adding acid or sometimes water in step two. And that's where the H is coming from right there. So now it turns out this is what we call the base catalyzed mechanism, or more generally the mechanism involving a strong nucleophile. But it turns out we can also uh, do nucleophilic addition with weak nucleophiles, but we need an acid catalyst. So let's talk about both of those mechanisms here for just a little bit. So for these two mechanisms with nucleophilic addition, uh, we're going to take a look at them both in detail, but they just pretty much go in reverse order as far as the mechanism. So with strong nucleophiles, your strong nucleophile attacks. That's the first thing that happens. And then we'll follow that up with protonation, where is in the acid catalyzed mechanism, we'll protonate first and then follow that up with nucleophilic attack by the weak nucleophile. So if we look at this strong nucleophile mechanism, it's exactly as it kind of showed below or above, I should say, on the previous slide. And we'll attack the carbonyl carbon. The pi electrons move up to the outer oxygen there, and we get the alkoxide intermediate here and with our brand new nucleophile attached. So, and then this side is gonna get protonated. So either we add acid or we'll have a protic solvent that can do it all on its own. And I'll leave this generic. We'll be definitely doing plenty of these mechanisms specifically with specific reagents coming. But that's our, our reaction with strong nucleophiles. It is always easier for the mechanisms in the next couple of chapters with strong nucleophiles, sometimes again being called base catalyzed. It's always more challenging with acid catalyzed mechanisms, as we'll see. So now we'll take a look at the acid catalyzed mechanism. In this case, the order of steps is reversed. We'll have protonation first, and then we'll have nucleophilic attack second. So first step is we're going to have an acid in there, and we're simply going to protonate our ketone or aldehyde. So now this does one major thing. It increases the electrophilicity of our ketone. So now this bond right here is polar. So and that carbon has definitely got a partial positive charge. But once you protonate it, now this oxygen has a, par uh, a positive formal charge. It is a much more polar bond. And so this bond dipole moment just went through the roof. And the amount of partial positive charge on that carbonyl carbon is much more significant. And so now with a weak nucleophile, a weak nucleophile now can attack the carbonyl. So strong nucleophiles don't need a protonated carbonyl to attack, but weak ones often do. And so we protonate first, and then we do nucleophilic attack. And then just like before, we'll kick the pi electrons up to the oxygen. And so in this case, now we'll have our nucleophile attached. We'll have an OH. And that's generally how it works. So just a reverse order of steps. Now, one thing to note. Uh, most strong nucleophiles have a negative charge, most weak ones are neutral. And so for weak nucleophiles, uh, when they attack as neutral species, they often end up with a positive charge, and we often have one more step to deprotonate them, taking them back to a neutral state. Uh, in this case, I've kind of omitted that, but we'll see it on specific cases. So it's one of the things that makes acid catalyzed mechanisms more challenging, is they usually are more steps. Now one big trend we need to talk about for nucleophilic addition is that 
aldehydes are generally more reactive than ketones. So, and there's two reasons for this, and one is steric reasons, and the other are electronic effects. Now, the steric reasons are easy enough to explain here. So, hydrogen's much smaller than any carbon chain. And so, if you have a nucleophile trying to attack the carbonyl carbon of any one of these, he's going to have the easiest time with formaldehyde on the end here, just due to steric reasons. But there's a second reason, and that second reason, uh, are electronic effects. So if we look at the partial positive nature of each one of these carbonyl carbons, it's not equal. So if we look at kind of this minor resonance contributor here between these two. So it turns out, if you recall, if I were going to compare, say, a tertiary carbocation to a secondary carbocation, we'd say that the tertiary one is more stable than the secondary one. Uh, all three of these carbons with their hydrons are electron donating through hyperconjugation. And because they're donating electron density towards that positive charge, it makes it less positive and more stable. Well, in our case here, our reactivity is due to our partial positive charge, and so if the more carbon chains we have donating toward it, the less positive it becomes, and it becomes a weaker electrophile. And so ketones having two carbons are the weakest of the electrophiles, and a normal aldehyde having just one carbon attached to the carbon yield to donate would be a little bit stronger electrophile than a ketone. And then formaldehyde, hydrons aren't donating or withdrawing, so there's no donating groups attached. And so you'd have the sig most significant amount of partial positive charge out of these three for formaldehyde, and that makes him the most reactive electrophile. So again, two parts to our increasing reactivity here of why aldehydes are... So again, two parts to our increasing reactivity of why aldehydes are more reactive than ketones. And again, part of it's sterics, and part of it's these electronic effects.